Real quick, what's the bravest thing you think someone can do on the battlefield? Kill 10 men or maybe the enemy commander? Save their friend's life? What if I told you the bravest thing someone could do during a battle was to run up to the enemy, just give them a good smack and run back without getting hit? We're talking counting coup right now. Go with the questions. To an Indian warrior's way of thinking, it's not really that hard to shoot someone from a couple hundred yards away and kill him. But to run up and hit him, then get back to your friends without getting hurt, that takes guts. If you saw my video on scalping, I mentioned the ultimate move for a warrior to earn massive cred during a battle. See, scalps are cool and all, but their main importance is a tangible proof of what you've done. Your actions, not your proof, are what matter most and reveal what kind of person you are. So the most important things you can do in a fight show off those positive qualities for everyone else to see. Now, coup is a French word meaning a strike or a hit. So at its most basic, a coup means physically striking your opponent. This custom of counting coup was most prevalent among the over three dozen or so tribes of America's Great Plains region, although other Indian tribes also practiced it to varying degrees. If you think the various tribes lived together on the plains in peaceful harmony, well, think again. The tribes were almost always at war with each other, and summertime was the unofficial fighting season. There's two main reasons tribes went to war with each other. First, there's all the pragmatic reasons anybody goes to war protecting your people and their resources, defending territory, obtaining supplies, and reducing your opponent's power. But Plains Warfare served another purpose. This was the main opportunity young men had to showcase their bravery and talents to their tribe. The Plains Indian culture was very individualistic. If you were a chief, a big part of what made others want to follow you was your personal charisma, credibility, and reputation, not the fact you were a chief. A large part of that reputation was earned on the battlefield. And your reputation filtered into every facet of your life. For example, a young man trying to get a father's permission to marry his daughter might get rejected if he hadn't earned any honors. Counting coup would go a long way towards proving you were good enough for his daughter. Young men would often dream of getting to sit on the tribal council, of getting awarded an eagle feather, or of getting to paint or decorate your clothing or horse to celebrate your deeds. Warriors who amassed a bunch of coup honors could wear the coup feathers all at once, although this made you come off a bit pompous and vain. It was more common just to wear one or two that you had earned. You could also display your achievements on your coup stick. A coup stick was like a resume that everyone could see. It could be carved and decorated with your badges of honor you had earned. This stick could also be carried into battle and used to count coup on your enemies. This desire to earn glory by counting coup led to some skirmishes that would probably confuse a lot of modern day observers. When two war parties would come into contact, one warrior would often gallop up to the other war party and try to hit one of the other warriors. If he was successful, then A, he had just earned a lot of awesome points by showcasing how brave he was, and B, the other war party had just been humiliated. That would usually be the end of it. Oftentimes during these battles, nobody got killed or even hurt because that wasn't the point. The point was all about getting that coup. Coups were divided into ranks or degrees. Most tribes honored first, second, and third coups, although some tribes also recognized fourth coups. The highest honor coup went to the first warrior to touch a living enemy. This coup would earn you an eagle feather. However, if you were wounded by the enemy in the attempt, then you had to paint the feather red. You gotta have a clean run if you wanna get full points. You could also get coups by being the second or third one to touch an enemy, or by touching a wounded or dead enemy. As an example, at the Battle of the Little Bighorn, White Bull, the mini Kanju warrior and one of Sitting Bull's nephews, earned his first coup of the day when another warrior shot a soldier off his horse. White Bull touched the soldier, then took his revolver and cartridge belt. As he touched the soldier, White Bull yelled, White Bull strikes the enemy first, so everyone in earshot could hear it, as was customary. White Bull touched two other soldiers and then ran over another with his horse. Apparently, touching enemies with your horse also counts, and warriors would paint their horses signifying when they'd done this. Near the present-day monument, White Bull dismounted and wrestled with another soldier. He had to call for two of his friends to help overcome the soldier, but White Bull earned another coup. Finally, near Deep Ravine, White Bull and another Cheyenne warrior each shot a soldier. They ran up and counted first coup on the soldier they had shot, then counted second coup on the other dead soldier. In all, White Bull earned seven coups at the Little Bighorn. After a battle, the tribe's battle participants would come together and determine who would be awarded which coup. There were almost always discrepancies, and this council was like a review board. The meeting's decisions were final, and to ensure truthfulness, the claimants often swore an oath that what they were saying was the truth. If something bad happened to you or your family after you testified at one of these meetings, it might be concluded that you had been less than truthful about your coup claims. 
Some of these disputes were real head scratchers too. In one case, two warriors were chasing down an enemy warrior in order to count coup on him. One of the pursuers had a long lance and went to touch the enemy with it, but the other warrior grabbed the middle of the lance as it made contact. Now who do you think got first coup? Mr. Midshaft did, since he was closer than the guy who actually possessed the lance. Just like almost every facet of Plains Indian life, the practice of counting coup changed and slowly went away, but not before one very important footnote. During World War II, Joseph Medicine Crow, a Crow Indian from Montana serving with the 103rd Infantry Division, was walking down a French alley and found himself face to face with a German soldier. Joe knocked the man's weapon aside and began choking the life out of the German. It was only when he cried for his mama that Joe relented and let the German go. When he got home from the war, Joe found out from the tribal elders that this incident counted as a coup against an enemy. Joe discovered he had met the requirements to become a war chief, and until his death in 2016, Joe Medicine Crow was the last war chief among the Plains Indians tribes. If you learned anything or enjoyed this video, please give it a like and feel free to drop a comment in the comment section. You can also subscribe to this channel for similar content and I will see you in the next video. Thanks.